Hi guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're going to discuss about sequential blooming Phalaenopsis orchids. Now these are usually the species which have this trait and also their hybrids. Whether they're primary hybrids or simple hybrids, they can still keep this feature. Now for those of you who don't know what a sequential bloomer is, well it's practically a Phalaenopsis which produces a flower spike it's usually not as tall as the ones you see in the stores and year after year it can produce brand new buds and flowers from the tip of the flower spike or it can actually branch out. The main idea is that a flower spike can last you for a few years and will keep produce blooms unlike the complex hybrids you have in the stores which periodically change their spikes. So theoretically you should have a Phalaenopsis which blooms year after year from the same spike. It can create multiple spikes but yeah the spikes will last you for a while. Now, the sad thing is I have been blessed with some accidents, let's call them like that, which prevent the sequential blooming Phalaenopsis to not bloom anymore. And actually, I pretty much killed the spikes. But I have some different examples. So I'll show you the cases in which a sequential blooming Phalaenopsis can actually stop producing flowers from that particular flower spike. The first one is the Bellina. Now, because this one was producing a leaf right below the flower spike and the spike was actually kind of mangling the leaf, I decided to try to make it stay higher. In doing so, I actually snapped the flower spike somewhere at the bottom and uh, what resulted was the death of the flower spike. So this is pretty much my mistake. So if you have a sequential bloomer, be really careful with these spikes. They're actually short and not very flexible. So if you pull on them too much, they will snap and they can actually die. <laughs> so yeah, this is the first case in which a sequential bloomer might lose her spikes prematurely. The second instance is if something happens to the stem in the area of the flower spike. And I have an example here, this is my Tetraspis. We'll probably talk more about her in a different video, but what's happening here, as you can see, the base of the stem is kind of dying. I have a lot of dying roots. In any case, it cannot sustain the flower spikes anymore. So if you can see here, the tip is still viable but it's drying. It also is losing a keiki right here simply because the stem is dying at the base. What will happen further? Really, I don't know. It's up to the orchid. Depends on the extent of the damage. But with these types of orchids, be really careful with the stem and try not to rot it as much as possible because the portion which is dead will not support the spikes anymore. Well, of course, this is the least of our problems in this case. But yeah, it's another instance in which a sequential bloomer might lose her spikes prematurely. And the third case in which you might lose the spike is if your orchid it is kind of tiny. It's still a seedling and the first flower spike will probably not be very impressive and I have an example to show you here. This orchid produced two flowers but also look at the tip of the flower spike. I'll try to zoom you in so you can see. This is not the tip of the spike. This is where a flower was. What you see here, this tiny little thing here, this was the tip of the flower spike. It is simply not able to produce any more flowers from this tip because it's not fully developed. Now it's perfectly normal in this case. We are dealing with the seedling blooming for the first time so you can have these types of anomalies or spikes that are not necessarily fully mature. Not really sure how to explain this, but this can happen. So in this case, if the tip is not able to produce flowers anymore, it will probably dry and you are safe to cut it because it will not rebloom again. Now, if we take this into consideration, it is safe to assume that if you damage the tip of the flower spike, your sequential bloomer might not flower, but it might actually create a secondary spike. And I'll show you an example. Here we have the Phalaenopsis leodoro. Now, this is a simple hybrid and one of its parents is actually the Violacea, which is a sequential bloomer. So some sources suggest that this orchid is a sequential bloomer as well. Now, I didn't have time to experiment with this. I tried to let this flower spike stay on and see if this indeed is a sequential bloomer, but let's presume it is. As you can see here, I managed to destroy the tip. So this tip dried. It is not able to produce any more flowers from here. But the spike did not dry out. It produced a secondary spike from one of the nodes. Now, whether this is a sequential bloomer or not, this could have happened. I mean, you do have the complex hybrids, which usually react like this sometimes. But sequential bloomers can also react like this. So if you manage to break the tip somehow, do not cut the spike. Just let it be. It might create a secondary spike 
or if you see that it dries you are safe to cut it but yeah just make sure that you're not gonna damage the tip i actually damaged this tip by brushing it against one of the walls <laughs> while i was watering so it's completely my fault but yeah just keep this in mind and try not to damage the tip of the flower spike of your sequential blooming phalaenopsis so as you can see, I did not have the best of luck with my sequential blooming phalaenopsis orchids, but I tried to make the best of it and create hopefully an informative video for you guys so you keep these things in mind and if you have a sequential bloomer with a drying spike maybe try to see if one of these cases can apply to you so you know the reason of course there might be those phalaenopsis orchids which just kill off their spikes because they're too sick or they cannot handle them maybe they have too many spikes that can happen as well but if you have a very healthy phalaenopsis with one single flower spike these are the cases you should keep in mind and you should be careful about so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up and a share subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and also feel free to leave me comments down below if you have further questions or questions about orchids in general or you have suggestions for videos if you click on the left side of your screen you'll be directed to orchidnature.com where you'll find care sheets identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section and on the right side of your screen you can click to watch another orchid video thank you for joining i'll see you next time bye